Steve Zajczyk with the LA Times here with uh, two of the stars of this year's Sundance Film Festival, Robert Reich, uh, former Labor Secretary, uh, here with the film Inequality for All, uh, which is directed by Jacob Kornbluth. And, uh, uh, quite an interesting film, and I know a lot of people have been saying it's the inconvenient truth for the economy, which is a little glib, but perhaps not inaccurate in how this film really shows uh, this wealth gap that's widened in this country since the 1970s uh, in ways that I think a lot of people aren't really aware of. Um, uh, Robert, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what this film really is and what it means? Yeah, I mean, for the past 30 years or more, I have been working on and complaining about and writing about and doing books on and Secretary of Labor working on uh, this widening inequality, which is really concentrating income and wealth and political power more and more at the very top. Not blaming people at the top. I mean, it's, it's the way the system has been organized. Uh, and uh, it's bad for our economy. It's bad for our democracy. Uh, to think of this just as a matter of fairness misses the big story. And that's what Jake and his fabulous team have actually enabled uh, the public to understand. Well, I think, uh, I think for me, I'm not an economist. And uh, I sat around with my friends like a lot of people trying to figure out what was happening to America. What's the real story? How do we cut through what, this is what the Democrats say, this is what the Republicans say, to sort of get to a real understanding. And I know for my, me and my friends, uh, we didn't know. And it felt like this deep anxiety about their economic troubles and how we're going to make it. But sort of also just to kind of put it in a story in a way was really important. We really wanted to see this in the big picture, step back out of the political fray, see it in the sort of macro way and connect it to real people's lives at the same time. So the film has these multiple layers. It has Bob giving us this big story. It has his personal journey talking about this stuff for forever. And then it has the real lives of people who are being affected by this stuff because if people who see this movie are anything like me, this is the biggest thing that they're worried about. They're worried about how am I going to make it? What's happening? You know, And that's really why we made the film and what we wanted to speak to. You know, one of the things that, that really struck me in watching it was just how many misconceptions we have. Even I think people who are reasonably sophisticated watch a lot of news, read a lot uh, online and, and in newspapers. We have a lot of misconceptions about what this wealth gap is. And one of the things that stood out to me was that the question of, um, you know, it's not about the rich making too much money. It's that they're not spending enough money. And the savings is the problem. Talk a little bit about that and how that contributes. To, to these issues. Yeah, that's one of the big paradoxes. Uh, the rich uh, spend maybe you know, 20%, 30%, 40% of, of what comes in uh, from their assets uh, or what they earn. Uh, and that's bad for the economy because we've got so much underutilized capacity. We've got so many people who need jobs. And we've got so many uh, people who are underpaid, essentially, that when so much wealth and power goes to the top, and so much income, and they are not spending enough, that actually slows the economy down. One of the reasons this has been the most anemic recovery on record is because you've got so much inequality. There are those who would say, though, playing devil's advocate for a second, that uh, even though it's created a lot of the issues that you lay out in the film, that this is how capitalism works. This is how the invisible hand works. Uh, wealth is going to be concentrated in the hands of the few, and you can't legislate, forget redistribution, but you can't legislate how they spend it or what they do with it, that that's, again, some would argue, built into the fabric of a capitalist society. What would you say to that? Well, what we try to do in the film is to make it very clear that this is the debate between the so-called free market uh, and government rules and regulations uh, is a false debate. You can't have a market without rules. And we determine the rules. And what were appropriate rules at one time in history may actually be working against us at another time in history. And so the question is, uh, what should the rules be? And, and, and if, I could, if I could add to that, uh, my friends had this sense, well, isn't this the way it's always been? That the rich have done this and the middle class and the poor have been screwed. And the, the film, I, I hope, gives people a chance to see this is, we're at a pretty historically extreme moment. And when we step back and understand that, that I think is a little bit of a surprise, that this isn't sort of business as usual for the economy. But then secondarily, that, um, that's, you know, that question of does it have to be this way? We take that on in the film and we show that it does not have to be this way. This isn't a surprise that we've gotten to this point. He's been talking about it for forever, but also that the, um, but that we can, that this, this sense of empowerment for people, because when I went around and talked about this film with people around the country discussing the making of it, I had this sense that people 
um, felt as though they didn't have the power to change the system that they're in. And I hope by seeing this film and by seeing how big this issue is, you know, we give people the sense that they can change and what the world is. And another really important point is that it is not a zero-sum game in which uh, it's all about redistribution. I mean, the rich would do better with a smaller slice of a rapidly growing pie than, a bigger than slice with a big a slice of a, of a pie that's barely growing. No. Uh, and, and we need, I mean, the country is in this partisan gridlock uh, and what we're trying to do, and what Jake has done so brilliantly in the film, is explain to people, whether you're Republicans, conservatives, Democrats, liberals, it doesn't matter. You need to understand the dynamic right now that we're caught in. And, and I love that it's interesting, the nonpartisan aspect of the film, and I, and I love that about it, that there's no, you know, because you're not wading into the fray of what a Republican, you know, you know, budgets and, and job creation and all this stuff that gets, I think, so politicized, you, you stay above that. You will also make the point, going back, Jake, to what you were saying about historically, that it hasn't always been this way. You talk about, um, Bob, the period after World War II and, and the incredible growth. I mean, this was under Republican presidents and Congresses, Democrat Congresses and, and, and administrations, and that we were able to do that because of that, just because of uh, how we approached and how we set the rules. Do you think it's possible to get back to that kind of post-war system, obviously in a 21st century economy with technology and all of that, but is there a way to, re in a way I'm watching the film, I'm thinking, well, that was great. We didn't know how good we have it. We can never get it back. Well, is there a way to do that? Look, we're not going to go back to the first three decades after the Second World War, uh, but what we've seen again and again in this country over the last 150 years is we have more capacity as Americans, when we understand the problem, to get very pragmatic, to change the rules so that we widen the circle of prosperity, so that we have a, vi a kind of virtuous cycle uh, of prosperity generating more prosperity, generating uh, kind of a better life for more people, uh, and we put ideology aside. We've done it six times at least over the last 150 years. We will do it again. Uh, this gridlock is insane. Uh, this zero-sum mentality is nuts. Uh, and this movie, I just, I, I really want to say this, uh, because it's entertaining. This is not an eat your spinach exercise. There's no way people are going to go to the theater if they don't, well, I really, I really should see this, but <laughs> What Jake has managed to do is make this fun. Uh, and it should be. I mean, the only way people, the only way people learn is, is through their emotions, and if they laugh, and they cry, and they, and this is a, this is an entertaining movie. Well, I would say, can I make one case? Yeah, and it's that if you, uh, if you think you understand this issue, this widening income inequality, mm -hmm. see the film anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you think that it's something that you can't possibly understand, please see it. Because what I hope that the film does and what Bob did for me when I was reading his stuff was to change the way I thought about it. It you know, gave me an understanding of the facts and figures behind it, but also took it out of this sense of right and wrong and fairness and sort of put it in such a larger context. When it, the movie's called Inequality for All, it's not sort of um, an ironic use of that. It, it says it really does affect everybody. This isn't a movie that points fingers at rich people. It isn't a film that sort of um, talks about it as a us versus them, where I think people are fighting about the issue now and in, some, in that way sometimes anyway. And I think we need to sort of change the way we think about it. And I hope, um, I hope that the film can do that. And one of the things I took away, and the film is very entertaining, and I think you know you get into a little bit into Bob's background. I love that that moment where you meet uh, Bill Clinton uh, while seasick on a Rhodes Scholar boat to England, and you know this guy with this sort of swagger and the, the Elvis hair comes down and I guess gives you uh, I don't know, some food or some whiskey, chicken soup, in chicken my hand. soup, okay. And crack the now he didn't say at that time, "I feel your pain." That came later. But he, uh, I thought you didn't. I thought maybe you fed him some of his better lines, but no, you there was no, they were there. But you know what. What happens, and I didn't even understand this until the film, is that my own personal journey over the last 35 years um, is very, very much tied up with what's happened to the economy overall. And what Jake does so remarkably uh, is make it so that this is a, it's not a film about me, um, but I, you know, I am the way in which uh, the viewer comes to understand the problem. And that's, again, much like Al Gore, and I think a lot of viewers, there is precedent for this, thought they understood the environment and the problems in the environment. They saw Al Gore explain it. They had a deeper understanding. We have to wrap up. I, I wanted to just uh, uh, kind of ask an exit question of each of you. What would each of you like people who see this film to come away thinking about and maybe more important, acting on? I want people to be inspired 
uh, to either go into politics directly or to be more active uh, in politics, or even as an informed citizen uh, to take a more active role in their communities. Uh, and again, whether it's education or tax policy or technology or uh, you know, money in politics, uh, Get involved. You know, our citizens, our responsibility as citizens is not just to vote and be on juries and pay taxes. It's to take an active role. We have very carefully avoided the notion that there's a magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. Many things have to be changed. But unless people understand the big picture and connect the dots, they can't begin as responsible citizens to know where to begin. I, you know, in general, uh, I think the debate over income inequality is framed in sort of partisan terms. And I hope that this film, I know will be seen through a partisan prism, but I hope we can step, get people to step out of this. I hope we can get some conservative people and some, some people from different sides of the spectrum to find out what we agree on, that we have this problem. That's, that'd be meaningful to me personally. As far as what people can do, I agree with what Bob said. Be careful of the magic bullet stuff, but also don't underestimate the power of information. And I hope that if, peop if a lot of people understand this issue differently, I know it'll change the way we can think about solutions that are policy-wise to fix it. What those specifics are, it's true. It's like, you know, if I could talk about inconvenient truth and, you know, I feel like what could we, you know, do about climate change they were talking about use less plastic and stuff like that. And there are these micro things that people can do in a way. I. I know as a citizen, I wish there were some way I could change the whole game at once. But, you know, it's also false of a film to say that these things are going to fix it. But it, it doesn't make watching it any less important or that sort of sense of what can I do any more great or any less great. It's great that people are walking away from this film wondering what to do. There's a whole bunch of really small things you can do and hopefully we, they can lead to bigger change. The specifics that we, we avoid in the movie, I hope, will come out through our website and through our outreach campaigns. Cool. Well, it's a fascinating film, a very important subject. Bob, Jake, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.